This video is how to apply a series of custom and default textures to objects, in this case a room, to make it look like however you want. Now the great thing about SketchUp is that it allows you to play with ideas and styles without spending any money or you know, building anything. So it can be very quick and save you a lot of time. Now I've been searching online and I found this image from um, a website which I think is quite attractive and I want to see if this would work in a room I'm building. I've also found some art which I think looks pretty good and I wonder how that picture would look in that room. Now I've created this really basic room in SketchUp and if you want to follow along with this tutorial all the files are in the Google Drive uh, folder linked below, along with references, and it is academic um, uh, content, so it's fair trade, fair, fair trade, fair play. Anyhow, we're going to now um, create the room to look like this. So the first thing I've done is I've downloaded all the images, and here they are. If I look at the file, I've got the picture, and I've got my um, room. So let's get the wallpaper, if you look at this, there's lovely green flop wallpaper, all that um, onto the back wall. And now the way we do this is to open this image in Photoshop. So here we are. You can use other programs. Um, GIMP, G-I-M-P, is a free version and that works fantastic for this. So what we need to do is we want, we want to crop the image so that we have a tessellating image. Now if we look at um, this wallpaper, we zoom right in, we can see that this pattern repeats. We've got kind of crosses here and we've got sort of flowers there. So I just need to take the crop tool and roughly zoom in somewhere like here and then zoom in properly. Now you will see that very quickly we've become pixelated because of the quality of the image. The higher resolution you have the better because it allows you to get a crisper um, image in the back wall. But for this purpose this is fine. So let's take the side in. Now let, I want to go just to the right of this cross so literally on the pixel line and this one I want to stop at the same point. So this means that when they tessellate it'll match up exactly. So the next thing is to find a point on the top and bottom and there's these two little flower things there which I quite like. So actually there's just the top of this thing there and the middle of those. And let's just go just to the top there. So what's going to happen is when you take this and imagine this as a tile moving next to each other and these going to keep responding and tessellating. So symmetry is there which is fantastic. So I'm going to save this for web which is there. Save and I'm going to call this um, wallpaper. You can call it whatever you like but it's a JPEG. So save and I now go to my downloads. I can see the file is there. We can see it like that. Let's close these down and go back into SketchUp. Now what you do to make this happen is go File, Import, and select the wallpaper section you've just created. Now bear in mind you can go onto any website which has wallpaper samples and they will probably have very good symmetrical square samples. You can just take them and use them properly. Or if you see a texture on a wall, such as um, I know the colour of this wall behind me, you could take a photograph of that, put that into Photoshop and create a square. Or say it's something like this jumper. If you like the stripe pattern, you could take a photo of this jumper, cut out a square in Photoshop and use that. So you're not limited by anything. You can take any colour or any texture and produce a tile and that tile can be tiled all over the wall, as we'll see in a second. Anyhow, after selecting this, the next stage is very important. At the bottom here, we have two options, use as image and use as texture. We're selecting use as texture. Now we will come on to the image bit later, but for now, just texture. Click import, and you see an absolutely massive picture. And that's far bigger than any tessellating image of wallpaper we would ever want. That's, that is not a problem. Hold down the left mouse button and drag out 
uh, however big you want it to be. So if you want a really big tessellating pattern, there we have it. If you want very small, I think that's about right. And then release. And it goes everywhere. And that's done. We now have, if I click away, the wallpaper is on the back wall. So we might want to put this wallpaper around all the walls. Very easy to do. We have a pink bucket here. And on the drop down, there's loads of different options. We want colors in model. This gives you all of the colors that are in the model. The name says itself. And if we scroll down, we will see there, the one we just imported. It wasn't there before, but it is there now. So click and let's, and the paint bucket tool, put it over a wall, click and click. So that is now the same scale on both walls as it was before. So you don't have to keep importing it and trying to get everything right. That is absolutely perfect. And if we zoom in, we'll see how good a job I did. I think I did a pretty good job at tessellation. Now, if we didn't crop it to being exactly a tessellating tiling image, then we would see strange lines in the wallpaper. That isn't a problem if it's a concept, but if you want to make something looking really good, you want the good cropping. Anyhow, we've made that, but I don't actually like the wallpaper like that all the way around. It's a bit too much. I want something a bit simpler. If we go back to our original image, it's got this kind of nice yellow background and the wallpaper is contrasting it. And I quite like that. So how do I get that yellow into my design? There's various ways you can do this, but I'm going to use it as a color. So back onto here, right click, open with Photoshop once again. And actually what I want to do is close this one down because I try to edit it. So open with Photoshop and I can zoom in and I'm going to choose a yellow. So get my pet out, just there, and I think that represents yellow quite well. Now if I double click on the sample I just made, this um, colour picker comes out. This would allow me to edit it, so I could say darker or lighter, but for this purposes, I'm going to assume that that is the perfect yellow. Photoshop does give you a whole load of different expressions of this colour. So we have RGB there, we have hex there, we have CMYK, so all these lovely different options. We go back to SketchUp, click on the paint bucket tool again. We have options along the top here. So this one are sliders. Now we've got RGB sliders, CMYK sliders, and HSB sliders. I'm going to stick to RGB because it's a simple version. So here we have 246, 245, 103. Let's see if I can remember that. So 246, 245, one, two, three. Okay, so now we have created this color. There's also the hex code there. So we could have just copied and pasted that hex code, which hopefully is gonna be the same. Um, yep, it is. Um, and also we can look at this and go, actually that yellow is not quite yellow enough for me. I want to modify it, whatever. Anyhow, we can take the paint bucket and just drop it onto the wall. So there we have it. We have the two walls with yellow on, which I'm gonna say that's good for now. So back onto our image we're trying to replicate. That floor is um, a wooden floor. We could take a picture of a wooden floor and we could do the same kind of tessellation as before, but there's an easier way because there's built-in colors in SketchUp, which is this little brick item there. Drop down and we want to choose wood. That one looks quite similar to the model picture we had there. And we just click on the floor. So that is it. Really simple. You might notice that the walls have these weird recesses in and that is because that's going to become glass. So same paint buckets. Drop down 
I should move this down so we can see better. And let's see what we got. Colors, roofing sketch, stone, tiles, hones, translucent. Obviously translucent is see-through. And we can choose different items here. And you'll see they've got different opacities and, and items, but this one there works quite nicely. And I can just click there, do that again. So just rotate around, select, and drop. So if we close this down, we can see that for both sides we've now got panes of glass. Okay. The outside of our, our building um, at the moment is just the natural grey of the uh, SketchUp model. We want that to be brick. So let's choose different things. What have we got? We have brick and cladding. That looks like the right kind of brick to me. So I'm just going to drop this onto the outside of the model, rotate it around, and keep dropping. Let's have a look what's on the back. That's not very good. Let's choose a colour, and then we have it. So, right now we've got most things. The inside recess here hasn't been done. I'm going to click brick because I think it's kind of an interesting contrast. Right now we're looking very 90s, which, you know, that's just how it is. So, let's put that there. Spin this around and drop some colours on here. Now, how do we get the other side, which is this side here. Well, we can spin around here, and we can uh, see there, and we can drop it on. Another way of doing it, which is kind of fun, is we go to camera, position camera, just drop it on the floor, that takes us into the building. Then we've got the look around command, we can turn our heads and we can see it. So that makes another way quite easy. Select the paint bucket, drop there, let's look around all the way to the left, keep going around, and once again, paint buckets and drop. So, zoom extent and orbit, we have now made a solid bit of colour on the wall, a texture on the floor, and we've got wallpaper there. But I want to put the picture in, I want to have my poster on the wall, see how it looks. So, very simple to do, file, import, and click on the Buddha image which we found before. Obviously you can choose any image you like, you can make your own art and put it in. So click import and we have the same very large item. So I want it to start about there, put left mouse button, hold down and pull it out until that looks about right to me and release. But there's a problem there, it's made a tile because I did not change the previous setting. So I'll do it again. File, Import, and this time I need to change this from texture to image. Right? Otherwise, you, what happens before or the tiled image will happen to you. So select, and the same place, about there, left mouse, drag it out, and release. And now, because I said select image, it is actually there. So I've now created a room which has a brick exterior. Now you can choose any exterior. I'll just prove that's here. Let's choose, I don't know, um, we've got roofing, we've got vegetation, we have water. Um, let's choose wood again um, and let's go for, I don't know, this kind of pine wood. I can drop that there. We've now got a pine exterior. So if you're thinking about doing something like a pop up shop, where you wouldn't have a brick building, you would have wood on the outside. This can be a, it's a good way to actually simulate having a wooden building which has been built for a purpose, such as two days in the middle of Manchester. And there we are. It's, so you can just play with concepts. And if you think about um, adding wallpaper and adding colours and everything. You can just keep going and going and going, trying different wallpapers, trying different images, putting different things in different places. But that is, in a nutshell, how to add colours, how to make glass, how to add wallpaper, how to add images. So, download the file, have a play with it, and enjoy.